السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جر جرتو الشما يو يا جن يا جر سن دين المانا يا بقى جر تنتي هند خيسان بقى دي هاتن خوني سجنتا سياسة إسا جميسة ورموت Welcome back to the Prudent Oromo podcast season 2 episode number 4 Today's title is Politics and Famine Experiences and Historical Facts Sagantan Rantana Wunti Sinrat Mirkanoite Siyasa Dafi Bela Taka Halota Hama Hawasa Mudatu Akamiti Sena Khesati Warri Ango Barbadu Fi Imma Barbadu Ittin Faidawani Galisani Ittin Arkatanida Afan Ingilifati Nid Ittifufa So I will continue uh, this program in English as usual. So according to many researchers and human experiences, there are several factors that causes starvation. And there are few global actors in the leadership of nation state that who determine what to prioritize when things go down, especially if it is interest in political power gain driven, you know. For one reason or another, the global community have been ignoring the existence of the Oromo people as a nation state and nation still held under the formation of Ethiopian imperialism culture to the current administration that inherits the same imperialist culture and ex exercising the same uh, mentality or attitude against the Oromo people. On this one, we will have a different or separate time to discuss why Oromo is ignored globally. Malif ummani Oromo adunyarati egama dabeta ka adunyana kamiti ummata khana bekhu dabde yarobiro tirati haso inaja chuda. Malif adunyan mujalaj alisu jirti. Wanti de ma jirtu wa laf tu damiti garu ammo adunyan ummato oromo di masani age facha injetu khoni rakina khenya mo rakina dunyati yarobro irati aso inaje chuda the subject for another time now despite the oromo people have unlimited access to its land or a resource that kept them heedless you know delusion i have a reason to say this now because they live in delusional under the condition of inferiority and oppression. Amantan malja chubat badeti. Hangam fe. Aka umma to romo titi. Da chi tenye di tana raak o tane mi ane raak galfan. Aka biyati la alu hinka. Waan biyarra arka tan arka cha hinje. Garu nuti mata khe nye khesa tu wantinu faka cha jirtu mali. Nuti da chi ti yarra anjira anin. Ota ta nam to kukwe da chi tenye na saamu ti hinjiru. I bilis hangka ba magalamit ng lima tayo ni Jeff at awan akasi matagay niya kaysa jiraja chula. Wanti akasi san ukuba taka ako oromon databu at taka sa mood databdo ako kabalto kan gote na tifakata yaro bro na tihaso mo ni dandia. Malifi dachi kota tinera na faida ako chuni dandia. Yaa mitan ni ragal fatay matitan ni tijira chifta ni gurgura tawan taka taka iman ni tibata. Garo biyer na wanti ako puli jerti. بيتسان أكيد بيجتهد تيجي وأنا سيخ سبعة تيجي دلدلته يجبرة تك تعرفته وانتك أبيني ده شيء سبافته بيجسان جارو نجرتي إلمان كهتي منا برنوتا جاري أكيد إنسان كرية بلسان أباتني بدتر منا برنوتا تي في إي أبدي فول درا أكيد أباتن بيتسان غرو جرتي إلمان سريف أبيني ده شيء أروميا خي سبعة وسنين Umat Oromo hegeresa for Yesu fitjira. Mo umat Oromo dachi rak otathe ragal fatutana. Aku mau biasa tifakate di bilis tifakate. Rafu jira mo takka umat akan himmonu jefiti abdi godeti jira mo mali rakini ni yerobirati rahasu naja cugaru dubin jur tu mali hangga fenelle yo dachi kabane akka fene. Yo wan fena dachi kenya san rabgoran ni Wan abeyni kenya san Akkanu ti huddu boda khufnu akka hawasa ti ti mogoru jiramale Fuuladuran u ofu ti hindi 
what I'm trying to say in here is we might have a land as Oromo that we farm, we get a grains or something half of it. Yeah, you can benefit from a piece of land, your farm land. But as a country has a natural resources, taxes, traders, uh, the, the trade tariffs and all this, is it building a better future for the Oromo children? Is that why people are protecting it? Or Oromo is in delusion and a heedless because he has a farming land, he thinks he owns the country. What makes the Oromo people weak? Or what Oromo, what prevents the Oromo people from rising and being a nation as he was once? Or are we gonna continue living under the condition of inferiority and oppression, just live on our land and speak our language and don't resist whatsoever? So, the unkind institute of Ethiopia have been practicing widespread systematic assault against the Oromo people, resulting in a policy implemented in pursuit of what? Their own strategic goals. Now, their own strategic goals is deemed by, deemed what? Criminal by international tribunal, domestic courts, and a court of public opinion. Malik the Chubar Badi Amantan, Wanti Isan God Ajiran Tuni, Heri Isan Ummat Oromo Tifi Dachi Oromo Tirati Basa Ajiran Tuni, Akata Ummani Oromo Tidu Ujuru, He Droni Da, Ibit Da, He Saragat Warferi Namota Dad Dad Tim Fano Da, Sumale Da, Dachi Sarati, Akata Niti Ajefama Juru Hun, Fad Inna Taka Gali Motu Masan Bakkan Gehu Da, Yohan Deman Tate, Hali san tijiran kun matan sa hala yekama godameti garsi sa yechula yeka hodja chaji ni yechu kula dunya durati garu yeka kana garsi sud afi yeka kana mormu daf umani oromo esaje because now they are using drones and uh, executions and all these things are to achieve their goals and to maintain a country. That is a criminal way of maintaining a country. If that is what they're doing as a criminal, Oromo has experience of long time, from Minilik, from Tedros, Minilik, Haile Selassie, Derg, Manlas, including this new dude, you know. So, famine is a political phenomenon. Starvation happens for a variety of reasons, of man-made or natural forces. Some are deliberately ignored for a period of time, like the one we have, like uh, what happens in Borana, what happens in Guji, what happens in many places in, uh, in East Hararge, you know? Deliberately ignored for a period of time until it makes an impact. Based on weather, caused or other factors, farmers, and governments or institutes are always bound to be aware of societal situation. What's coming? You know, what is the market going to be? How's the weather going to be? Yet, authority might prioritize certain things, like authorities like Ethiopia. They intentionally ignore people so they can die of the land. Livestock and hundreds and thousands dies on those landers how they make space. They ignore them until this thing is drought comes and makes an impact. So they prioritize to help out certain societies. Tigra was being helped. Borana was not being helped. Borana is helped by the Oromo people. You know, people getting a fund from here and there, here and there, here and there. But the international community helps out the other people in still ignoring the Oromo people's situation. So these are done, you know, for political gain or due to what, you know, own vested interests. The recent Ethiopian administration, what they did, what they work on Oromia land, redistributing landers, rezoning, the government of the country, coercing farmers in unfair trade of their own grain sold to support government. And the government force the farmers to sell their unharvested grain on the land to sell it to their own oligarchs that supports 
the Ethiopian imperialist government itself so they can export it to somewhere else while millions of Oromo, millions of Oromo are starving and their livestock are dying all over the place and they have no support, no help from any global communities. Yet, also the Oromo that is in different region that has a rain and grain is coming out of their, their, their land are forced to sell those grains to a government and a government supported investors. So this oligarch can sustain the imperialist government of Ethiopia. This is a research on this a surrogate warfare, you know, the transition or the transformation of war in the 21st century. But it's been there for a very long time. In 2019, in Georgetown University Press, uh, Andreas Craig and uh, Jean Marc Rico, uh, there is a publication that they come out with, you know, surrogate warfare, the, trans the transformation of war in 21st century. That's the title. This is also a Library of Congress catalog, and there you, can, you can find it in a Library of Congress in USA for uh, conventional concepts. So surrogate is a Latin word, it's a verb, surrogate, a meaning is to elect as a substitute, features of proxy, replacement, you know, to operational. It is called also SOF, you know, Special Operation Force, which is proxy, proxy for particular function or set of function. You now, for example, in the, seven, in the, seven, in the seven years, uh, for instance, the, the U.S., when they trained and funded, equipped uh, the Mujahideen uh, against fighting against the Russian in Afghanistan, those are the type of, you know, surrogate warfare they do. Uh, Fano Amhara, Abdi Ile, the Somalis that displaced the millions of the Oromo people, they are surrogates, surrogates of, you know, the government. Uh, the Gumas that used to kill the Oromo people during the uh, TPLF time, and now the Fano Amharas and all these organizing groups that are attacking the Oromo people uh, using a drone, all these things are a part of proxy, you know, special operation force for particular function instead of which it means to oppress the Oromo people. It provides a means to disrupt also, you know, it kills morale of the people because people get in the fear. They cannot even support their guardian classes because of these problems. So when I say it provides a means to disrupt the resistance kinetically, okay, and the willpower of the adversary psychologically or without a major combat operation. You know, if the government send real soldiers and fight in a war, that is something else. But without doing that, they can demoralize the entire societal psyches by just using all these factions on a people, especially I'm talking about the Oromo people, you know. So they do this now simply, this can be labeled as technological war because of what? It is what type of weapon and tools used. And this will only increase due to emerging technologies and converging in both ways, you know, enforcing one another. So they use drone, they use some other, you know. Also, they are the resistance group have to change its style now, style of fighting, because now you need a surrogate to actually conduct certain things. They do, the government use these state things to, to avoid an accountability, accountability, actually. Since the use of violence, at scale are no longer the privilege of the state, you know, they don't want to use these things. And a great power only, the access to technology like a drone operation will contribute to the what? Means of coercion, it forces people to fear, you know, it forces, it forces people to, uh, to be aware of certain things. Morally cannot be limited to attain goals, you know, destruction or total war because they don't feel it, they're not the one doing it with their own hand. Now they can send a drone, or they can send a you know, stupid, uneducated, untrained 
Fan Noam Haras just to burn and slaughter everybody alive. That's what's going on. Oromo must know this quotation. What is a continuation of state policy with a mixture of other means? And who said it? You guys can find out. I didn't say that. To fulfill a long-term objective requires the identification and the intention, intent, what is intended and what is the goal, you know, through assessment on resources in a highly organized manner to gain these things, you know, to fulfill a long-term objective. That is what it requires. It requires the identification of intents. You have to identify what is our intent and what is our goal. What are, why are we doing these things? Why are we arm struggling? So we have to do this through assessment on resources. And we have to highly organize and we have to do it in a highly organized manner to gain these things. Political powers are sustained through good law and good armies. Do Oromo have a good law and good armies? That should be in question. Yet, for a government, politician, group of interests, you know, they are advanced through modern way of control. Air power, drone, cyber weapons are now uh, made of operation that are employed by now these days many nation states. Recently, Ethiopia, the Ethiopian Prime Minister, in conjunction of local armed forces of many states, the Amhara Fangos, the Afa Somalis, in the past include the South Gumas in effort to coercively submit the Oromo people. The government of cruelty and violence has no more employed state soldiers. Just like I said, they are avoiding accountability and they don't use this as a primary barrier of you know, accountability. They don't send a soldier to fight a conventional war. That is what all has been prepared. That is what we're supposed to be building so we can have conventional war and gain our freedom in our own way. So since the main objective goal to stay in power and the foreign leadership is to make oneself indispensable that nobody goes forward without him. You know, that's what, I'm, what I meant to say when Amhara and Ethiopianism became indispensable to the Oromo people. The Oromo people, some of them think they cannot move forward without Ethiopian politics or even the name of it. These include political actors and group of interests that makes you not move forward. To believe that the new Prime Minister of Ethiopia came about on the transition of what? The outs, the kicked out TPLF. And Abi himself is TPLF homegrown son, mentored by Mala Zenawi and worked as a member and a leader, the same regime in higher level of security. And he's supposed to be accountable, but now he's in power, even though he's done so many things in the past. You know, so he's in a high level of security of the country, let alone TPLF himself supposed to be, including him, brought to justice and accountability. Today, starting 2018, since he took power, he has been ex exercising the same method of TPLF surrogate warfare on the Oromo people and the Oromo people's land, ignoring the prolonged drought in many places until there is no solution for it. But through its involvement for economic and political use, that's, that is what he wants to gain. He has, he has to have a chaos, he has to have an advantage for him. So his glory, his honor, all his talk is mostly it is opposite. Also it is animated by nothing but his own selfish ambition. And Oromo must know that. The great public tasks or this project they talk about, which have undertake, he undertook while millions of Oromo under drought, under starvation, under persecution for their land, for, 
for their political stand while Oromo as a people and their livestock burned alive are from him only opportunities. He provide them opportunities, nothing else. He doesn't care what's happening. He provide them with opportunities for coloring his own ambition. You know, the reconfiguring design. He and his likers in the past and distinguished different from great criminals. All these people, including TPLF, people who, who are working with them right now as Oromo. I don't care if you are OPDO, I don't care if you are whatever group that you claim, unless you are the guardian class of the Oromo people called Ola or Wabo Abao. If you're not them, you are a criminal just like Abi Ahmed and all his surroundings. The only thing that distinguishes these things different from other criminals purely by the fact that criminals lack defense, they don't have a court, they don't have a government that defends, they don't have armies. That is the only difference they have between the other great criminals. Otherwise, they are criminals. Even their actors are considered a criminal by whom? Like I say, their actors deemed criminal by international tribunal courts, domestic courts, and the court of public opinion because of the cruelty and atrocity they commit to achieve their goal. And they have a courts and they have a soldiers to defend these causes for them because they are ruling a, a country, they are administration. They, they don't supposed to commit these crimes, but they will be taken to accountable by Oromo people soon or later. So these governments and the criminals, the, the, the moral the motivation of such leaders and criminals are the same, they have no differences. As Stalin did to Ukraine and all the satellite nation, I mean the whole Caucasus, you know, satellite nation, with the starvation, now Ethiopian government, as once did in the past, currently putting the Western Oromia in the largest region of Oromo, Morana, are put under extreme pressure of rezoning, redistributing, forcing natural droughts caused by starvation in the East Oromia and many regions, especially on Borana, conducting irregular warfare in Gujis, in uh, Harargis, in many places this starvation are going on. But ir irregular warfare is also going on. The irregular warfare and the indication, it is indirect approach to injure the Oromo people. The government not only restricting resources and redistribution, the landscape to create conflicts between Oromo people themselves. They also have institutional system, also institution supported agents and politicians that workers on what? Shopping threats from Oromo to keep Oromo mind occupied and stay disabled. That's what they want to do to Oromo people actually. Oromo people just stay disorganized, discombobulated, discommunicated, and miscommunicated. The administration or the government and Abi, one, have determined, okay, which or what to eliminate as Oromo activities. These are in their plans. We will talk about it some other time. Two, to seize the initiative activities. Three, to dominate. Four, to stabilize their own project and activities. Five, making known it is a civil authority, which is, is a government made it, so you cannot shake it. Happen by terminating others' plans, since it is, this is a government plan. One, they determine which or what to eliminate. Abi and this administration, that's their goal. One, to determine which or 
what to eliminate as Oromo activities. Two, seize the initiative activities, that Oromo activities. And three, dominate that activity Oromo doing. Four, stabilize their own projects and activities on Oromo people. Five, make it known it is civil authorities, the government did it. You know, this is government made it happen. Why? By terminating the other plans, since a government plan and no other people's plan work because this is government, it's authority, you know. Those other plans might be what proposal by opposition, it could be anybody, you know, or other politicians or you know, administration members. This is why Oromo is consistently in a crisis under drone and others. Type of you know, surrogate warfare because we're not looking at these things. And ultimately, the majority population of Oromo left to starvation. And what? Died by Amharas and Fanmos persecution, while the minority Tigray having everything that's discussed, it is issued discussed globally for them. This is not acceptable. Oromo should not accept this. Oromo should assess it is own self. Ethiopia and the world is in contradiction with Oromo people as a nation. We should know that as indigenous of the land and mostly Oromo as a people who are struggling to preserve its lives, its properties, and its, its resources, and its landes, and its territory, and its identity as Oromo. And in and independent society. No people or it is livestock should put through drought and starvation while the government of the people and it is oligarchies force farmers to sell their grain with less and export it to a neighboring for a profit. Oromo is dying in hunger. Oromo is being massacred by Fanu Amhara and by bordering uh, Somali tribes, armed tribes, which are armed by Abi for a proxy war against the Oromo people on their own land. No people should be put under starvation and fear of war. Like Fanan said, colonialism is not a thinking machine, nor a body endowed with reasoning faculties. It is a violence in its natural state. And it will only yield when confronted with even greater violence or force. This is not my quotation. Colonialism is not a thinking machine, nor a body endowed with the reasoning faculties. It is a violence in its natural state. And it will only yield when confronted with even greater violence or force. This is Franz Fanon, the African panelist, activist and revolutionist saying this. My Oromo people, especially the one who listen to this podcast, be serious about your action, be serious what you participate on, be serious on making things happen for the Oromo people. Until the next program, I will say peace to you all right here at this time. I will see you soon. Keep struggling. Mainly support your guardian class. Ola. Always. Bobangale chonu motoromo. Bilisuma hatatu. Izni goitatin. Oromian. Nibilisomot. Khuni siyasa isagamesa. Oromoti. Anga kufi. Waliti anun. Waliti debinu. Ilman oromo hundinu. Nagen najirada. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.